In this technical note, we present a distal tibial tuberosity arc osteotomy in open wedge proximal tibial osteotomy to prevent patellofemoral arthritis. This video shows how the osteotomy site opens after open wedge distal tuberosity tibial osteotomy using model bone during simulation. Lateral view. An 8 centimeter longitudinal incision is made anteromedially one third of the way between the tibial tuberosity and anteromedial tibial cortex. The tendons of the pes anserinus, MCL, and underlying periosteum are sharply incised with an inverted T shaped incision. Then the MCL is released completely at its distal insertion. T-shaped flaps are reflected until the starting point of the osteotomy is exposed. The patellar tendon insertion is also exposed. Similar to OWHTO, two parallel guide wires are inserted from the medial tibial cortex toward the tip of the fibular head. Then, a short hinge pin is inserted into the hinge point under fluoroscopy. Our custom-designed compass for arc osteotomy is then mounted on this short hinge pin and used to describe an arc with a radius of about 50 millimeters. A series of 2 millimeter dots is then drilled on the arc. The descending osteotomy is begun 15 millimeters posterior to the tibial tuberosity using a small oscillating saw. A small sagittal bone saw is then used to cut between the guide wires at the proximal end and the arc of dots at the distal end shown under fluoroscopic guidance. Next, the arc osteotomy is made using a small bone saw by connecting all the dots. Finally, using an oscillating saw, the transverse osteotomy is begun beneath and parallel to the guide wire with the lateral hinge intact. After elastic movement at osteotomy site is checked to ensure completion of the osteotomy, several chisels are inserted into the transverse osteotomy site. Opening of the osteotomy site is visible under fluoroscopy and also through the incision. During opening, interfaces at the arc osteotomy site are slid around the hinge position and kept in contact with each other. The transverse osteotomy site is then opened using a bone spreader until ideal correction is achieved. We usually insert beta TCP for the patients requiring more larger correction. The harvested osteophytes are inserted into the empty osteotomy space using a tuberosity screw device of our own design for OWDTO, compression of the interface of the descending osteotomy surface is performed. The reflected inverted T-shaped flaps are then sutured and secured to each other over the osteotomy gap. Fixation using a locking plate and eight screws is then performed on the medial side of the tibia. Finally, bicortical screw fixation from the distal part of the tubercle to the tibia is performed using the tuberosity screw device, which also protects the popliteal neurovascular bundle. This is the fluoroscopic image after OWDTO. There is full knee flexion and extension postoperatively.